Damage to components in clocks and watches can occur in all kinds of ways. This particular wheel was subject to what's known as a run-through in the trade. This is where another part of the mechanism has failed, in this case the fusey chain had broken and caused a, uh, a sudden uh, release in power. In order to keep as many original parts as possible, I wanted to try and retain this wheel. I didn't want to make it a whole new wheel, which would of course been the easiest way of repairing it. So I came up with a method of holding the wheel so that it could remain on its arbor in its original form and I could machine off the damaged teeth. This would enable me to put on a ring gear of new teeth. The damage to the teeth was not severe, but it was severe enough to warrant replacing. We weren't talking about one or two teeth either. As you can see here, it was the tops of all of the teeth that had been effectively milled away uh, when the damage had occurred. Good way of getting a really nice finish on brass and a really, um, really fine cut is to use a tool of this form. As you can see there is relief on two sides but there is no chip break, there's no top relief, it's just flat. This also means that it's very easy to sharpen just to keep uh, touching up the two sides. The first thing I had to do was to machine down the uh, OD of the wheel so that I'm effectively machining away the damaged teeth uh, but not so far that I was going to uh, break through the crossings so leaving enough material of the original wheel to uh, to fit a ring gear to. So here is the wheel with the outside diameter machined down. You can see I've left enough of the original rim to enable me to fit the ring gear. The next stage is to machine some hammer hardened cast brass uh, down to thickness. This gives me the material to make the ring gear from.
big fan of using these super glue chucks. This is an aluminium chuck that I just faced off and super glued the uh, raw cast brass to in order to machine the uh, inside diameter ready to accept the, the wheel. With the blank machined to size I was then able to fit the, uh, the wheel inside the, uh, the ring gear blank and just sweat a very small amount of uh, solder. I didn't want to heat the part uh, excessively because I didn't want to blue the pinion or um, uh, distort the, the wheel in any way. But after a, a light clean up, the joint is almost completely invisible, which is the uh, result that I was aiming for. So with the ring gear fitted to the wheel, the next job was to turn down the outside diameter and the other side of the, uh, of the wheel. I was really pleased with the results. The uh, joint for the uh, for the extra material for the as I'm calling the ring gear is almost completely invisible. So that now gives me essentially a repaired wheel blank to cut new teeth into. I used the same jig to hold the wheel so that it was centered uh, and concentric in order to cut the teeth onto the uh, repaired wheel blank. The first stage of cutting the teeth is to make sure that the outside diameter is on size. I turned down the outside diameter on the same lathe in the same setup so that I could ensure concentricity when cutting the teeth.
I really love using my Shoreblim 102. Uh, the accuracy is simply spot on and uh, it's, it's just it's such a lovely machine to use. It's so tactile to use. Uh, so I always get great enjoyment from doing work like this. With the outside diameter on size and the machine set up for cutting the wheel, I used some blue dicum to uh, mark up the outside so that I would be able to see the lands on the tops of the teeth as I uh, bring in the, the setup to, uh, to cut the right depth of tooth. teeth cut, I then uh, cleaned them up using some autosol, uh, still in the jig so that I'm not in danger of rounding off the edges of the teeth in any way. Uh, it's, it'll remain nice and sharp while it's essentially supported by both sides of the jig. So all that work leads up to this moment where I can then remove the wheel from the jig and hopefully unveil a uh, nicely repaired wheel which looks exactly as it would have done the day it was made. and I'm extremely happy with the results. The repair is almost invisible and will certainly work beautifully. So I'm very happy with how the wheel turned out. So I then moved on to tidying up the surface finishes, polishing the, uh, the inside of the crossings where heating for the uh, uh, the repair process had, had discoloured the, the brass.
And with the crossings polished, I then use this tool, which is actually a screw head polishing tool, but can be used for uh, for other things, like in this case, to uh, polish the, the the faces of the of the wheel. And here's the finished result. I was very, very happy with the uh, with the repair on this wheel.